Exactly what we like to see before the busy months of hurricane season June. So far, relatively quiet as far as the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, but Saharan dust is dissipating. What does that mean? We've got it here for you on Tracking the Tropics, powered by Handyman Roofing. Hey there, folks. JB here with you live in your hurricane headquarters. We've also got meteorologist Amanda Holly there on the right side of your screen. We're going to be talking about a lot on this edition of Tracking the Tropics, including whether or not the heat that we have been seeing is going to be any sort of ingredient for what is lying ahead as far as the Atlantic hurricane season. But for the very latest on what's going on in the tropics, we've got meteorologist Rebecca Barry on standby at the wall. Rebecca, what, what's going on there behind you? The short answer is nothing, but we know we don't like short answers because we have some areas that we may end up watching, especially later on in the week. The good news is the Gulf is quiet. It's been very, very active on the Pacific side this season, but we're not seeing much from that. We've got quiet conditions across the Gulf. We've got some low pressures out across the Atlantic, but the general mid-Atlantic is quiet, and that's good news. When we take a closer look at our development zones where we typically see development this time of the year, it's just not set up for that right now. We're not seeing those low pressure systems swirl up and move into the Gulf right now. But we are watching this area off the coast of Africa. It's not swirling yet. It's an open wave. But we had another wave sweep off the coast of Africa last week, and it did a little bit of a number on the Saharan dust, moistening up the atmosphere just enough. And as it moves across the Atlantic over the next five days, it'll be moving over sea surface temperatures that are already favorable across the Atlantic for development. So this is the one to watch. It's not within five days, so that's why the National Hurricane Center is not tracking it. But when you take a look at the dynamics that the system will be moving through some of the energy in the atmosphere that it's going to encounter. Right now, it does hint towards favorable potential for development. Now, this is early in the season to see this type of development rolling off the coastline of Africa. Typically, our development this time of the year is a lot closer to the United States. Right now, we still are enjoying some Saharan dust. Here's where it is right now. It's thickest all along the western Gulf, but we're really getting to enjoy the sunsets here in Tampa as a result. We have nice, vibrant sunsets, pretty dry conditions, really dry stretching near Cancun right now. And that's why when you were maybe watching those long-term forecast models last week, they kept hinting that we were going to see a low-pressure system swirl up along the coastline here. That just hasn't happened. The Saharan dust really squashing that. The moisture is just not there. We have a little bit more moist air over San Juan, another swath of lighter Saharan dust near the Lesser Antilles. Now, this is a forecast moving into tomorrow. We have another plume, but it really starts to weaken before it gets to us. So it's just not going to be as strong by the time Tuesday rolls around. We're looking at much more moist air over the entire Gulf, stretching down to the Cancun and, San and south of San Juan as well. There's a little bit of Saharan dust there, but it's not that thick plume of Saharan dust that we like to see. And so that will start to wane across the Atlantic, especially once the thunderstorms, like we were just tracking with that wave, start to crank up. That really squashes the potential for Saharan dust. So sea surface temperatures, they're warm already, especially right there along the coastline in the Gulf, especially along the Louisiana, Texas coastline, and even closer to the Bahamas. We've got some really warm sea surface temperatures. But out across the Atlantic, we're already seeing those 80 degree temperatures, which is basically what you need for development. Taking a closer look at some of the hottest temperatures in those 90s. And so that's where we, once you get right there along the coastline, that's when you see the warmest sea surface temperatures where it is getting shot shallow, and that's where we're seeing those warmer temperatures. And so the good news is no new developments expected in the next five days. The next area to track would be that open wave off the coastline of Africa, and we might start to see that potentially by the middle to end of next week is when we might start tracking that system. But like I said, that's a pretty early in the season type of development because in the month of June, this is where we typically see development in the Gulf close to the coastline. It's those spin up storms. They tend to be weaker. They form over the Gulf where sea surface temperatures are a little bit warmer. This is what we normally see for June. Now, June's almost over, but when you take a look at historical tracks, this is where the storms have formed in June. Almost none tracking off the coastline of Africa. All of them almost exclusively in the Gulf or close to the coastline in the Atlantic. We are moving into July, so here's what you can expect with July. Those zones shift a little bit. They shift a little bit further north in the Atlantic. They shift a little bit closer to the coastline, and we, we don't have that more likely spot in the Gulf anymore. That more likely spot's off the coastline of the eastern coast of the U.S., but we also get another area closer to the Lesser Antilles where we have likely development. So it does start to shift back out towards the mid-Atlantic, but it's not certainly what we're seeing with the current development.
development out there right now. And so we'll take a look at the number of named storms per year. The Colorado State forecast is for 20 this year. The record's 28. Our average is 14. So far, we've only seen one named storm. And so we've had some spike years. This was the record for 2005 right there. But we've been pretty close to average the last couple of seasons. When you take a look at the hurricanes per year, the Colorado State forecast for that this year is 10. Our record's 15. That was 2005 right there. That 30-year average is 7. And so far, we haven't had any hurricanes. So it has been somewhat of a quiet start. The past several years, we've had named systems even before the hurricane season started. That didn't happen for us this year. And so hoping that quieter trend continues a little bit, especially when it comes to this category, which is major hurricanes, category three or above. Colorado State forecast calling for five of those. Our record in 2000, or excuse me, this was the records in 1950, and that was eight major hurricanes. Our average is three, and so far we've had zero of those, which we like to say and we like to see. And so just to sum up those numbers for you, that hurricane season forecast from NOAA, from Colorado State, and the average there, calling for an above average season. We just haven't really seen that coming to fruition yet, but this is the t quietest time of year that we normally see. Once we get into late July, August and September, really the peak of the storm season for that. And so we're certainly looking at the quieter conditions right now, enjoying it while it lasts. Here's the names we'll be running through this year. Alex, of course, is that we tracked a potential tropical cyclone one in the Gulf that finally did form once it crossed Florida. And so we've already checked off Alex in terms of names this year, but Hopefully, we won't have to use that extra list of names. And, of course, we're live here for you in your hurricane headquarters for the name storms that you're talking about. And hopefully, we stay in the A's, B, C, D, E range for as long as possible and don't get, you know, to speeding through the alphabet. All right. We're all back here with us, of course, in your hurricane headquarters on tracking the tropics. Now, I have a question for the two of you, and as maybe we can go back to the sea surface temperatures because I think okay. Rebecca and Amanda know exactly where I'm going with this. Uh, Americans in the southeastern United States have been feeling this incredible heat the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and we all know that heat and really in particular warm waters, that's what's fuel for tropical storms, tropical development, and, and of course hurricanes and major hurricanes. So my question to you both Amanda and Rebecca, is has the Gulf been heated to a point or are we starting to see patterns of heating that are going on to where that could be an ingredient and could be a force to be reckoned with later on in hurricane season? I mean, we're already seeing heating out there. This is very normal this time of year for those temperatures to start, to start rising very quick. We just had the summer solstice yesterday, right? So the sun is at its highest point in the sky. It's directly over the Tropic of Cancer. So it's heating up the waters very fast. The heat dome, JB, that you're specifically talking about, it hasn't actually been centered over the Gulf of Mexico waters. Here in Tampa, we've just been kind of on the outskirt edge of it. And the, the hottest temperatures have been much farther to the north. Now, it has been a prolonged event. So has this helped to warm up temperatures a little bit quicker? Maybe, but right along the coastline of the northern Gulf Coast, those waters up there are a little bit shallower and they heat up a little bit quicker. So that's pretty typical for us to see these warm, warm temperatures this time of year. It is. It takes so much longer for those bigger bodies of water to warm up than, say, the air or our daily forecast. And so it is certainly a little warmer in those shallower areas of the Gulf. I'm really happy we don't have a hurricane barreling through the right. Gulf right now because those warmer sea surface temperatures could be a situation where you see rapid intensification right at landfall. So happy that we're not dealing with that because that's where we're seeing those temperature spike. And we've seen that the past couple of years where these storms have been approaching landfall, right? And they're just continuing to intensify right up until even a little bit after landfall. So that's definitely helping to contribute to those is these really warm temperatures right up along the coast. Very interesting. And of course, folks, uh, we look forward to having more interesting conversations here for you on tracking the tropics. A bit of an abbreviated episode due to scheduling. We do have to get going here on this edition, of course, on WFLAnow.com, trackingthetropics.tv. But trackingthetropics.tv, that website is where all of our conversations exist when it comes to our team here at WFLA, the Max Defender 8 weather team with Amanda Holly, 
Rebecca Barry, Jeff Biradelli, Lee Spann, Eric Stone, our terrific team here in Tampa Bay, Florida. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for more conversations about tropical development and the Atlantic hurricane season. For Rebecca and Amanda, I'm JB. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week or sooner. Of course, we're live Wednesdays at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, or whenever a storm forms. So we'll keep you posted here as far as the Atlantic hurricane season on Track in the Tropics, powered by Handyman Roofing. Have a good one, folks. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.